Yay. Do you want to know how to make the most delicious, delectable strawberry rhubarb crumble? Do you want to win a free cookbook? Well, of course you do. Thank you so much for watching this week. This is Cookbooks with Virginia. My name is Virginia Willis. I'm a chef and cookbook author based in Atlanta, Georgia. And each and every week on Friday at 11.30 a.m., I have Cookbooks with Virginia. And y'all, it is so much fun. We get to, we get to talk to your favorite cookbook authors. We get to ask questions live to them. And each and every week we learn us a new recipe or tip or technique. And if you're not catching it live, you're going to want to stay tuned anyway, because you're going to see a delicious rhubarb strawberry crumble. Now this week, I'm so excited. I have Melissa Bayon of Farmhouse Weekends, and this is, it is the perfect cookbook to enter spring. Now I have to tell you that the cookbook has recipes throughout the year, but looking at these recipes and looking at the produce and the vegetables and the fruits that we have coming up, I'm super excited about this book. So Farmhouse Weekends, and if you go to my Instagram feed this morning and all across the weekend, if you go to my feed, you're gonna see the cover of this gorgeous book and you can enter to win and it's all that simple. So let me bring on Melissa. I'm super excited to have her with us. Hey, Melissa, good morning. Good morning, Virginia. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm, um, I'm in love with your cookbook, girl. Oh, thank you so much. That's so nice to hear. Well, it's just so wonderful. So it's Farmhouse Weekends, menus for relaxing country meals all year long. All right, so I'm going to have to ask you, what are you going to tell somebody that lives on like, you know, a 10 story high rise in New York City? What's, what's the deal? How can I have a farmhouse weekend? So um, my husband and I, when we were newlyweds, we lived in a condo in Las Vegas. Um, and all we had was a little patio where we tried to have a garden and my parents had apricots in their backyard. So we would make jam every spring. Um, so we really wanted to have kind of this farmy country lifestyle as best we could from where we were. Right. And then when we were a young family, we lived out in the suburbs um, and we planted half of our backyard with fruit trees and we built raised beds in the other half. And we had a couple of little backyard chickens. Um, so we were still trying to have that farmhouse lifestyle. And now we live out in the country in a farmhouse. We have a couple of acres. We have a lot more chickens than we used to have. But we've noticed that our life is really the same during the week as it was before. We work nine to five jobs. We're running our kids all over the city for activities and sports and school and music lessons. So it's really on the weekends that we get to slow down and relax, mm -hmm. take a deep breath, to go to the farmer's market and buy fresh produce like you were talking about, like the asparagus and the strawberries and the sugar snap peas that are coming on right now. Um, in the fall, we get to go apple picking and that's stuff that anybody can do. It doesn't matter right. where they live. They can take a break on the weekends. They can really slow down and relax, enjoy good food with the people they love. And that's what the book Farmhouse Weekends is all about. And I hope that the recipes inspire for people. No, I think so. And then I think that you're exactly right. It doesn't, you know, I was kind of being facetious about the 10 story high rise in New York City, but it, it really is a mindset, right? Like it, you know, um, it, 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 uh, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, really, you can make some of your beautiful recipes. So y'all, the, the really, like I said in the intro, um, there's some incredible recipes. Let's see who's here with us. Yay, Jimmy Profit's here. Yay, he's always, you're so always so good to see. I have to tell you, Melissa, um, Jimmy works for the Old Mill Inn and they have, uh, it's, a, it's one of the few water powered mills oh, yeah. left in the country and they make some really beautiful grains. We'll have to hook you up with that. Yay, and I've got Corlette here. She's all about farmhouse weekends and um, you can always count on my mama showing up. So, hey mama, you're gonna love this cookbook. And we've also got Beverly. So thank you so much for joining us, Beverly. So Melissa, I have to ask you, so you've got this, you've got your book divided by season, but let's back up a little bit. Will you, separate from you telling us about Las Vegas and then the suburbs and then the farmhouse, what's your story? I mean, you're baking, you're Lulu the Baker, uh, uh, com. So y'all need to make sure to check out her blog, but sort of what drew you to, to writing these beautiful cookbooks and baking? 
Um, well, I am not a baker by professional training, mm -hmm. um, as so many people, you know, right. so many people don't have professional training in the kitchen. Right. Um, by trade, I am a high school science teacher. Well, oh, you, wow. Not anymore. Um, so I, I used to teach high school science. Um, and then when my kids were little, I retired from that. And um, we moved away from family. And um, the internet was really just, you know, starting to pick up in social media and things like this. It was right. way before 2008. And I heard about this worldwide baking group called the daring bakers and at the time i think they had like ten thousand members i have no idea if it's still going or how many people they have now um but you could be anywhere in the world and once a month they would choose a recipe and everyone would bake the same thing and then you so wonderful it was it was so much fun you would post your results on the reveal day on social media and you had to have a blog and so I started a blog. That's when I started Lulu the Baker, way back in 2008, um, so that I could have somewhere to post these reveal recipes. Um, and then it just became a place to share family favorites. I grew up loving to cook. Yeah. Um, when I was little, my cousin and I planned to have a catering company together when we grew up, because he also loved to cook. Um, and so it's just kind of evolved from there. Um, right. my, my first book was Scandinavian Gatherings that came out back in 2016, I think. Um, yeah, and then Farmhouse Weekends is finally here. It's a project that I've been working on for a couple of years now, so I'm really excited to have it finally be making its way into people's homes soon. Well, I think that your, um, your, uh, your science uh, background obviously um, your science background, you know, there is a lot of science to baking, I think. I mean, the, the people don't have to have a huge understanding of it, but there's a, there's a, there, you know, there are a couple of key things yeah. that you, you kind of can't skip. So yeah. I want to show y'all some of these photographs. I'm going to start with not what Melissa is going to kindly make something for us today, but I saw this. Oh my gosh, this cherry crumb cake. Wait, wait a minute. Oh my Lord, that, that photograph is awesome. There's so many great things going on there. And then it looks so good. So you've got menus for relaxing, but so, but it's not just all dessert. Let's go through some, let me show some of the folks, some of the photographs um, for spring. Look at this, um, look at this quiche. Oh my gosh, so good. So, um, so you are, uh, you're in uh, Oregon. So you're in Western Oregon you're on the West Coast. Yeah. And I was asking you, will you tell us what your spring is like right now? So sometimes our springs are very wet and cold. A few years ago, um, it was like the wettest, coldest, longest winter that anyone in Oregon could remember. Um, that was a really hard one. And this has been the exact opposite. It's been like, very soothing to the soul. Um, it's been sunny. It's been warm. We've had a few like 70 degree days, which is. Oh, great. wow. Yeah. All of our, um, we have a row of Japanese cherries on our driveway. Those are gorgeous and blooming. And some years they bloom late or they bloom and then the rain and wind come and knock all the blossoms off. And so we only get to enjoy them for a couple of days. And this year it's like, I think we're on week two of just these gorgeous cherry blossoms. It, it's been a really beautiful spring. We're very lucky. It was That's just so awesome. It's really been, it's been pretty here in Atlanta too. And I don't know. I mean, I feel like some of it we get, um, especially after being cooped up, everyone being yeah. so cooped up this winter and cooped up this past year. I think that everyone sort of uh, literally and figuratively like sort of chomping at the bit. Um, you know, ready to get out to the farmer's markets. And some of our farmer's markets haven't caught up with our desires quite yet, right? You know, it's like, it's, it's still pretty early if you're a farmer. Um, uh, but what you're gonna demo today, and I see what you're doing, you've been prepping, um, you've been prepping strawberries and rhubarb, which are two glorious uh, spring, um, uh, spring produce, spring uh, fruits that are available. So tell us a little bit about what you've got going on there. So there are basically two parts of the strawberry rhubarb crumble. And what I'm working on right now is the filling. It's really easy. The whole dessert is very easy to do. Um, this is two pounds of chopped strawberries. It's very strawberry heavy because mm -hmm. I like things sweet. Um, and then it's half a pound of rhubarb. Um, 
some sugar, some cornstarch, and some lemon juice. And then I'm just stirring that together and I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes or so, ideally. I don't know how right, long right. it sit right now, but ideally, if you were making this at home, you'd let it sit for 10 minutes so that the sugar can bring all of the juices out of those strawberries. And yeah. it can start to mix with the cornstarch so that when it goes in the oven, it immediately starts making this really luscious, um, gooey, saucy pie filling type thing. Oh, um, yeah, that's so good. Now, I have to ask you, because I think it's just a funny thing. Um, I can be, all, quite frankly, on weird about rhubarb. I didn't grow up with it. Um, and I know that strawberries and rhubarb are a classic combination. And I love y'all so strawberries and rhubarb go together they're just like a classic combination but i think it's because what melissa said like the strawberries are really sweet and then the rhubarb has this acidity so they play off of one another now some recipes call for peeling the rhubarb and some recipes do not are you a rhubarb peeler or a rhubarb not peeler um i have never peeled rhubarb so I usually, this rhubarb actually came from my friend Katie's farm yesterday. Oh, wonderful. Um, it's, it's brand new. It's very tender. Um, I suppose if you got your rhubarb, you know, from the grocery store and you were unsure how long it had been sitting there right. um, and maybe wanted to make sure it was a little bit tender, you could peel it. But this, I, I knew how fresh it was. And so I just... Right, right. No, no, no. And it's not a it's certainly, certainly, certainly not a criticism because I think it's like it just sort of depends. And that's that's part of it. Right. Like knowing, you know, being able to um, I'm doing some jam and jelly recipes right now. And uh, it's really, you know, like as you probably know, like with your preserving yourself, like canning is an exact science. And yeah. then there's so much nebul nebulousness to it as well. So, you know, that's what I would say about things like for people to to taste the fruit or to like literally taste the rhubarb. It's going to be tough and stringy. Peel it. Right. If it's not tough and stringy, don't peel it. It's got more, more goodness going on. Yeah. So y'all, if y'all, if y'all have any, oops, there's a problem there. We're going to have that. <laughs> I did the wrong thing. It's not Deborah. If you have a question about Melissa, go to Lulu. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Who did that? They're, they're immediately in trouble, but we can show this. If you have any questions about farmhouse weekends, you can go to my uh, go to my um, website. So, so you've also so you've got it's not just um, it's certainly not just baked goods. White cheddar and egg and zucchini egg bites. Santa Maria grilled tri tip. Now I have to ask you about this. What is Santa Maria barbecue? Because that caught my eye when I was reading yeah. it. I'm not familiar with it. Well, and being from Georgia, I mean, you're like in a barbecue capital. Um, so Santa Maria barbecue is little known, although I have read about it in magazines, like I think Sunset Magazine maybe um, yeah. years ago ran a big article about it. So my husband grew up in the central coast of California, the San Joaquin Valley, um, right outside of Bakersfield. And in that area, um, years ago, like in the 50s maybe, the Elks Lodges started having these um, Santa Maria tri-tip or they would use sirloin. They would have these like fundraiser barbecues. Um, and so, it, I mean, it's a real thing. Um, so it's, it's little known, it's unique to the central coast of California and they do, um, it's grilled tri-tip and it's always grilled over red oak, if you can get it, which, but regular, you, we do it on a charcoal grill. So, right, right, right. Um, yeah, yeah, I get it. But you know, it's kind of funny because um, there is such a history of barbecue in the South, but you know, Lordy mercy, I, my opinion on barbecue, there's all this like infighting about um, who invented barbecue. Yeah. I think the person that invented barbecue was the sort of hairy bent over human like person that, that, that met a, a lightning strike in the middle of the wood, right? <laughs> like a, mil, a bajillion years ago. Like I feel like that trying to discover who invented barbecue is, is uh, I'll just say it, kind of ludicrous, right? Like people have been like cooking meat and slow cooking meat for a long time. And there are the, all these beautiful traditions. Like, so, you know, if you were to ever say, what about California barbecue? Someone from Georgia, South Carolina would be like, what are you talking about, boy? And of course there's a history of, of, Carolina, of, of California barbecue. So, well, I would love for you to talk to us some more about this beautiful rhubarb crisp. Okay, yeah, so we've got the filling. It's all done and it's just gonna sit while it gets super juicy and then we'll toss it one more time before we put it in the pan. And in the meantime, I'm gonna make the topping. It's another really easy part. We've got flour. We're adding some old fashioned rolled oats, just like Quaker oats. 
Um, yep. Not the thick oats, just the regular ones. Right. Um, we've got white sugar, a little brown sugar because it tastes so good and has such a pretty color. Um, cinnamon, I'm trying to think of what else in, is in here, baking powder and salt. And then I'm gonna grab, I'm not gonna use that. Hold on one second. No worries. Grab a fork to stir that with. And I made a little video of this for Instagram yesterday when I was making my one that's already cooked. And I oh cool, thank you. That's yeah, cool. Everybody, y'all go check it out. Make sure it's she's on Lulu the Baker on Instagram, and your your Instagram feed is delicious. Thank you. And then so I'm gonna mix that the dry ingredients first, just to make uh -huh. sure, especially that baking powder and the salt are evenly distributed. And then we're gonna pour on a whole stick of melted butter. That's not a problem. That is not a problem. Never a problem. Um, and I just use salted butter. I use salted butter for everything. I know that that's a real um, thing. You know, it's a, you know what I think about that, and and good for you for championing the use of salted butter. My um, my grandmother never had unsalted butter in her refrigerator. I don't think in her life, right? Yeah. And I think that my mom has only started using unsalted butter because I started using unsalted butter, right? Like um, most people. Have I think I think most normal Americans probably have salted butter, right? And if I'm making a really fancy recipe, like if I were going to make croissants from scratch or something right. like that, um, I would go to the store and I would buy a brand new, you know, pound of fancy European unsalted butter. Right. But in my day to day life, I have salted butter in the fridge always. Yeah. We use it for toast, and we use it. For baking. Oh my gosh, salted butter, like some salted butter on a nice piece of toast. Oh, yeah. it's so good, just that little bit. Now I do have a question for you about you put in baking powder in the crumble topping. And I'm yeah. kind of curious to know what you're gonna say, especially now that I'm more familiar with your science background. So, you know, baking powder is a little bit of a leavener. Is it just that you wanna give it that crumble topping some lift or what's the yeah. what's your rationale there? Yeah, just a little bit of a lift so that it's not so dense and hard. And we, um, the longer I, so this is mixed and I'm going to let it sit here for a couple of minutes. The longer you let it sit, the bigger chunks you can get. But then you don't want anybody to, you know, like break a tooth. You don't want them to be so hard that they're like biting into the little rocks. So right. the baking powder will just help kind of lighten those delicious toothy chunks a little bit. Hi, oh, that's so cool. That's so great. That's good to know. I don't think I put baking powder in any of my crumble toppings. So I'm more of a cobbler person, but I do like, mm -hmm. you know, crumbles are crumbles are fantastic. And oats, you know, it's kind of interesting to talk about with a stick of melted salted butter, but oats are good for you. So there it is, healthy. And the strawberries and rhubarb, you know? That's right. You get in your, you get in your fruits and vegetables. Yeah. So now that those have sat, for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an eight inch square pan. And mm -hmm. this is a little, I wouldn't say science as much as math, but my eight inch square pan, and this one that's already finished is in a nine inch deep dish pie pan. Mm -hmm. have almost the same volume. Right. So if you don't have an eight inch square pan, I figure most people have an eight inch square pan. But if you don't, or if you want something a little fancier looking, you can also use the nine inch pie plate and the, it will fit in either pan and um, the baking time will be the same. Yay, so that's wonderful. That's, I love that flexibility. So y'all, seriously, um, let me give you a share of this book. Look at that gorgeous cover and doesn't that make you want to snuggle up with this book on the sofa and check it out. And um, Farmhouse Weekends by Melissa Bayon. Um, you're going to go to my Instagram feed and you're going to like me and then like Lulu the Baker and that's Melissa. And um, and then you can enter to win this free book. And I'm super excited. So she's showing us right now how to make her rhubarb, rhubarb um, strawberry crumble. And in the strawberries, there's like there's strawberries and rhubarb and some cornstarch. It's been sitting a little bit. It's made this like really lovely liquid. Um We've got someone beautiful cover, says Laurie Bassett and uh, Mila from Peru. We've got someone watching from Peru. Jimmy Prophet says he always uses salted butter, LOL, and adjusts sometimes if he needed. He follows up with a secondary comment. So look at that beautiful mountain of fruit you've got there. Look at yeah. that. We're just going to add the topping and spread it out nice and smooth so that you don't have like a high part. Um, uh huh. 
And in this case, it's just kind of a, a dry, short, ready cookie type topping. It's right. not a batter right. topping. So you're not going to have to worry about the topping getting cooked through at all. Like you won't have any, sometimes when you make something with fresh fruit, you have to worry about the, like the crust getting baked through all the way. Right. Or making sure that, you know, the cobbler batter doesn't have gooey spots. And you don't have to worry about that with this. No, that's so good. You know, I have to tell you, I was looking at a magazine last night. It was this beautiful fruit thing and fruit dessert pie. And I looked closely at the photograph and the bottom looked raw. And all I get think was, oh my gosh, you. So with the crumble, you got this. That's great because you don't have to worry about the under, the under, the, right. the, the raw yeah. underbelly of a crumble. Yeah. So here's how it looks right now. Hey, that looks awesome. In the oven. So it just goes in at 375 for, I would say 35 to 40. It really depends. Every oven is different. But yeah. let me show you the finished one so that you can see what you're going for. Mm. So it's nice and golden. Mm -hmm. um, and then the real key is that all around the edges, when I pulled this out of the oven, you could see those strawberry juices bubbling up. And that's fantastic. That's the key. So those are the two things you're going for so that you'll know it's done. Um, bubbling strawberry juices all around the edge and a nice golden top. So there yeah, you go. That looks so fantastic. And y'all, we're gonna I'm gonna have the recipe up um, on my Facebook page and on the Instagram feed and all that later so you can catch it. But what I really want you to do is we want you to buy this book. So um, this book is available at Farmhouse Weekends. And it is available uh, wherever books are sold, including all the online spots. But I'm going to start a new thing this week, and I'm just going to ask you, and if you don't have one at the top of your head, but is there a is there a local independent bookstore that you like to utilize in Western Oregon? So our little city bookstore that we like to go to is called Smith Family Books um, in Eugene. I don't think they actually offer anything online. Um, like they have a website, yeah, but you can't order online. Like you really have to want to to buy books from them because you have That's to. That's so cool. Well, I think I only, I only mention it because I think it's so important that we support independent bookstores, right? Like, so my sort of opinion is that Jeff Bezos gets plenty of my money from Amazon. So I, I buy tons of stuff from Amazon, but I always try to make a point. Um, uh, to order uh, most of my books from independent independent bookstores. And I always want to ask. And so y'all can go to um, indie.org and that will tell you where your local bookstore is. Um, but uh, this, um, this actually, this book, it's just, it's just coming out, right? It's still, yes. when so, is your official launch? So the original um, launch date was supposed to be April 6th. And then because of COVID and shipping delays, major shipping delays, they didn't have all of the books that they needed for all, to cover all of the pre-orders. Yeah. Um, those shipped out in time so that people would all have them on launch day. So the launch got pushed back to April 20th. But I do happen to know <laughs> that people are already getting theirs. So it's a little bit of a, a trickle out launch, which is fun and exciting. Yeah, no, that's good. Oh, you got some got, got some props from Carrie Bachman. She has seen a cookbook or two. So that's a one that's a, that's some serious props you just got there, sister woman. So good for you on that. Oh yay, Scott. Yeah, see, rhubarb, I don't know. Rhubarb's not super southern. I think it's probably uh it, it may be a spring mountain crop, but um, you know. Uh, I think that like in South Georgia right now, they're already harvesting broccoli. I mean, it, it's a it's a whole other climate. It's a whole other climate down here. This was another recipe of yours that I thought looked absolutely yeah. splendid. Coconut and apricot scones. Those are beautiful, Melissa. Those are really lovely. I might I'm going to have to um, we don't have many apricots around here, but you may re you may remember that we may have some peaches. So I had to try these with peaches. That so let's see what else we've got. Laurie Bassett says we that rhubarb is very um, prop popular in Maine, and uh, we've got we've we've got Jimmy sending a message to your bot to his buyers to get this in the stores. Boom! And we have another person <laughs> saying that they never knew about rhubarb till they moved to the Mount South Midwest. That's my friend Corlette, and then she is definitely a Georgia girl. So so if you want, um, let's talk a little bit. So. 
your the inspiration for your recipes. I mean, you've got some you've got small kids and you've got a busy life and you were talking about running around. Do you feel like that these recipes are only for the weekends that they're super time consuming? Or do you also feel like that you have and I have I, of course, have my answer to this, but I want you to share with folks that what you think about what these recipes can be and can they make any during the week? Oh, absolutely. So I think some of them are are more special occasion type recipes. Um, yeah. like the grilled tri-tip, it's ready really quickly, actually. Um, but that's something that we make like on Sunday if we're having the whole family over for you know a summer barbecue in the backyard. Right. Um, but the the buttermilk pancakes, we make those all the time. Not only do we make them for breakfast, we take turns choosing Sunday breakfast in our family, and those come up at least once every rotation. Um, but we'll make those on weeknights. They're super easy. Um, I really tried to make the recipes as easy as possible and as flexible as possible. I know I really appreciate flexibility in a recipe. So lots of the recipes have variations that you can use. Um, like there's a summer cobbler um, that I think I just called it a summer fruit cobbler. I can't remember exactly what the title is, but you can basically use any summer fruit that you want. We've used fresh peaches. We've used frozen peaches. We've used berries. We've used a mixture. The goal is just to have the right amount of fruit. Right. Um, right whatever right. Fruit you want to use, whatever combo you want to use. Right. Um, in the chocolate cake recipe, which is another great one. It's a great weeknight cake if you need chocolate cake in the middle of the week. Yeah, who doesn't need chocolate cake in the middle of the week? Yeah, everybody needs chocolate cake. Yeah, I'm not familiar with those people. I don't know them. <laughs> um, it's just the kind of cake that you bake in a nine by 13 pan and you just serve it out of the nine by 13 pan. Um, and I put, I think five or six different easy frosting recipes that we love in our family. So I really tried to make it like something for everybody. And if you like chocolate cake, but you like it, you know, you don't like it with vanilla frosting, there's a chocolate frosting recipe or there's a peanut butter frosting recipe or a cream cheese frosting recipe. So yeah, I'm in awe. Uh, speaking of icing, and I've got some questions in, I was in awe of that situation. <laughs> Look at the loopy frosting. It's like, it's like crocheted. It's so perfect. <laughs> when I saw that photograph, I was like, Damn, girl, that's some seriousness. Yeah. Not only on the deliciousness of the frosting, but bravo for you, because I know what it's like to, you know, for the for a cookbook. So y'all, we're at the end of our time. Melissa, I've got five questions for you. Okay. Are you sort of ready? Are you ready for the cookbooks with Virginia? Five questions? Yes. All righty. So what is the last cookbook that you cooked from or read other than your own? Other than my own. <laughs> Um, what did I just pull out? I'm trying to think. So I love my like King Arthur flower. Yeah. It's like a Bible. It um, is. I, I go to it for recipe inspiration or if I need like, like I need a classic recipe for, you know, vanilla sponge cake that I've never made before or something like that. Right. I can go and they will have a recipe and yeah. it's always, like exquisite. No, yeah, you know, cookbook authors, I know you know this, but y'all, for those of you that don't know, like, I may have an idea for something, but uh, if I've cooked it before, then I can sort of, you know, go off of that, but, and some recipes are easier than others, but there's always the Bible that you reach for that's going to yeah. be like the, the, the gold standard of XYZ cake, and then that allows people who are developing recipes either for products or for cookbooks or for blogs to sort of use that. So that, that's really wonderful. Um, so what is, what is your, one of your most indispensable cooking tools? Um, I love a good um, half sheet pan. Yeah. Cookie sheet always with rims. Um, yeah. I cannot tell you how many episodes of the Great British Baking Show somebody loses their bake off of the end of a rimless cookie sheet. And I'm like, why are you <laughs> rimless sheets? Just use the ones with the rims. They're so, they are endlessly useful. Biscuits, cookies, sheet cake, roast a chicken. chicken. You can roast a chicken on it. I mean, you know, yeah, I'm in, whole, I'm in full agreement of that. The rolled rim, uh, half sheets. And I actually also love the little quarter sheets, right? The, or like a little nine by 13 that'll fit in a toaster oven. Those are incredible too. 
All right, so I may know the answer to this one. I'm not certain, but of all the flavors, sour, salty, bitter, sweet, and savory, what's your go-to? My go-to is sweet, but I, I really like sweet and sour together. That's like the ultimate. I love sweet and sour candy, sweet and sour savory things. It's just my favorite. No, that's good. That's cool. Cool. It's been really fun to hear the different responses from everybody, you know, because everyone's palate is a little different. So there you go. All right. So this is a little, this get, we're getting into a little bit more controversy, but it's not meant to be so. So who is, um, who is someone like if you have a couple hours on a Saturday afternoon to either like look on your phone or watch YouTube or watch PBS or watch Food Network or whatever, who is someone that's in the culinary uh, video sphere that you like to watch? Like who is one of your favorite celebrity chefs? Who do you like to get inspiration from or, or a show that you like to watch? Right. Uh, well, I love Ina Garten. Yes. I just think she is wonderful. Everything she does is just perfect and lovely and looks beautiful, but effortless. Like yeah. how easy is that? How easy is that? I'd be out with her for a weekend and she would cook me food. That would just be dreamy. Yeah, it would be pretty dreamy to have my weekend catered by Honor Garden too. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. All right, so last question. Please share with us um, one of your favorite food memories. Like what is, you know, when you kind of, cause food is so, uh, so dear to us, right? It's not just something yeah. that food is sustenance. What is one of your favorite food memories? Um, so I remember as a kid, um, my grandma lived probably a mile from us and uh -huh. every Sunday we would go to her house for Sunday dinner. Um, nice. and so there's not just one, you know, specific food memory of Sunday dinner at Nana's house. It's kind of a conglomerate of all of them, but like pot roast, that is a Sunday dinner at Nana's house food. Um, I learned how to set a table at Nana's house. Um, setting the table for Sunday dinners. Uh, we would get to take turns going around and like collecting little things to make like a centerpiece, you know, a little, a little vignette um, in the middle of the table. Um, I really, I think, learned how to bake from getting my turn to make, you know, Sunday dessert for dinner. Yeah. House. So yeah, that's so beautiful. Well, I'm so glad that you did that because I know that I'm so glad to to meet you and to have you on Cook for Virginia. And congratulations on your beautiful book, Farmhouse Weekends. And y'all, she had to get up extra early on the West Coast to make that beautiful uh, strawberry rhubarb crust. So Melissa, thank you so much for joining me today with Cook for Virginia. And y'all, make sure to check her out at Lulu uh, LuluTheBaker.com. Okay, thanks, Melissa. Thank you, Virginia. Y'all, well, there we go. We're at the end of another episode of Cookbook with, with Virginia. Thank you so much for watching. This is really uh, so much fun for me. I can't even tell you. I, I love um, getting to interact every week with different cookbook authors. I'm seeing so many incredible cookbooks, and it's just really nice to know that in the age of free recipes on the internet, that people are still into cookbooks, because I hate to tell you, everything you hear and read on the internet may not work, may not be true. So you want to go to cookbooks. So this week, Farmhouse Weekends, please go to my Instagram feed and uh, sign up to win. And there's also a link there if you need to buy it from the Evil A. Um, you, can buy, uh, you can buy Melissa's book from um, my link there. So thank you so much for watching. we got lots of new great guests lined up. Have a great weekend. Um, and go get the rhubarb strawberry crisp crumble recipe on my website and bon appetit y'all. Bye-bye now.